All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another SLG Meetup. Now, today we're going to have one of those guests that you don't want to miss out. He's such a successful developer and an author that he's going to tell us all about his story. I mean, I've met a lot of successful people, but his story, oh my God, is really one that you don't want to miss. Now, he's the owner of a company called Rastegar Property Company. His name is Ari Rastegar. There you go. The man himself. Hey, what's going on? Listen, I'm super excited to hear about you, your story. Congratulations on the article that just came out today on the real deal. I mean, you are the real deal. So I appreciate <laughs> thank you for your time. It very thank much. You and uh, it's, uh, it was a very, it's, you know, that project as an aside, it's a very special project, which is a good way to start the discussion because you know, this is about reinventing how people live because of technology, because of the way the world has changed. So we're actually changing uh, architecture, meaning we're getting rid of dining rooms to make larger kitchens because, you know, that's where people congregate. And then like things that are, are beyond just real estate is what we look at. We look to innovate. We're building a massive community on 318 acres. Uh, when it's done, over 15,000 people, you know, will live in this city. And it's uh, in Kyle, Texas, which is just south of Austin. It was actually the fastest growing city in the United States of America in 2021. And it's funny that they actually didn't even have a stoplight in 2009. And so it's, uh, it, it's great because we can help bring identity to the city. The community needs it. And I'm very proud that we actually donated 11 acres to the city of Kyle to build the new elementary school on our property. So there's a lot of very, you know, very special wow. things here. People that know me know that, you know, uh, obviously we've done, uh, we've done pretty well, but we've done pretty well because we do things that are great for our customers that are great for our investors and, um, and really creating value and enhancing community. I'll never do a deal that's just about money. It's, it's just not who I am. You know, I started this company with a $3,000 loan when I was in law school. And, you know, and now we have, uh, I don't even know what the number is, but over a million square feet under, under construction. And when Kyle, this project breaks ground in January, we'll have about 3 billion total assets uh, over the next four years. I own 100% of the company, never sold equity at the company level. And, you know, our investors are public pension funds, insurance companies. You know, my wife works in the company. The kids come to the company. I named it Rastigar because it was my grandfather's kind of dying wish. But I'm the kid that never should have made it. I was flipping burgers at Johnny Rockets and McDonald's when I was in high school. Um, I, I delivered pizzas all through, all through college. I went to two community colleges before even getting into college. Um, so, look, if a guy like me... Yeah, but if a guy like what, me what that, you know, I'm sure is not nearly as smart as the people that are watching this stuff can do it, uh, it's really a testament to what's possible with a dream, with a vision, and of course, hard work. But uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, we've, been, we've been very blessed. And I wish I could tell you this was because, you know, we predicted the markets and this, that, and the other. There was a lot of grace being that I happen to be born in Austin, Texas and happen to be become the best real estate market in the world. So it was a, it was, there was a little, little bit of luck there, but uh, what Pablo Picasso used to say is that luck is real, but it has to find you working. Uh, and you have another quote on Pablo Picasso, by the way, that I really Everything love. Everything that you can media, imagine is. is real. And what we do with that is it's on the side um, of all our different development projects so that as you drive by a piece of land, that quote is there so that people can start to think, what's going to go here? What could this be? And, you know, and to me, being an English major and never taking a math or a business class in my entire life, to me, to me, you know, I can always do oh, the math wow. in my head, but... Um, it, it was really about, you know, again, these psychological aspects, sociology, the community. And then, you know, I sketch a lot of these buildings preliminarily myself, you know, so the artistic part of it, I looked at it, I said, okay, well, I, I do paint and very few people, you know, know that about me. And I do write, obviously, but I looked up 
at the sky one day and I basically said, well, what if I make that, that my canvas? And so basically all the buildings we build, I think of the sky as the canvas and, um, and I'm just so lucky to do what I love so much and do it with the people that I love and do good work, good, do, good work for good people. And it's, uh, it's, it's really a privilege more than anything. I really love also your story. I mean, there's a book that you wrote, which is The Gift of Failure, which, by the way, I encourage everybody to check it out. It's on Amazon. It's on your profile on social media because it's how, from your mistakes, people can That's right. Their and own and, success, and, and I, I don't know what kind of idiot you have to be when you manage money for a living to write a book called Failure, The Gift of Failure. <laughs> um, but but, but it's, really, it's really the truth, okay? And, and I manage money not only for the big institutions, but also some of the biggest celebrities, athletes in the world. And the more that I'm around them and see them perform at the highest level, we learn that failure is how we learn. And people have this bad connotation with failure as being bad, but it's the other side of the same coin of success. So we fail forward. And for me, it's always been about the truth. And, I've, and to me, I've been more concerned about, you know, health and wellness, you know, uh, transcendental meditation, posture alignment, and all the things that to build myself in a way that I can then contribute. And those are the core values that I've always lived by. I'm a guy that takes a $3,000 loan to become a billionaire with everything that you're doing and all the assets that you're holding on. What's been the biggest failure and how did you turn yeah, it uh, into Well, that's, that's an interesting question because first of all, there's, there's little micro failures every day, right? But, but for me, truly the biggest piece was recognizing early on that I had more ego in what I was doing that I recognized. And I wanted to do something this, I wanted to be right, and I wanted to be innovative. And then a transition happened when I realized I don't want to be right. I want the right answer. And when that happened, that mm. turned, turned everything around because then we were after a meritocracy. And that is what built the company. It's what built the team to where, back to that point, and the, the failure was, I didn't see that. I did maybe a little bit, but it took me about five, six years ago before it really hit me. And I said, look, we do this on behalf of our clients. This is, this is not like I am a work at, as a privilege for them. So, if I don't have the, the idea myself, who cares? Like we need to surround ourselves with believable people. It needs to be a meritocracy. And when that, I realized that was the failure happened and I converted that into the gift, the blessing, the lesson, the, build, the business went straight, straight to the moon. Wow. wow. And, I, and I, I love what you just said. It's about taking really ego as your, in your advantage, not as something that, oh, I need to be right but about really finding the right answer. And that really changes everything. I couldn't agree more with you. And that's amazing. Now, obviously you've done a lot of different things, you know, being an author. In all these years that you've been doing it, obviously there's ups and downs, but have you ever had a role model or somebody that you look up and just like, no, okay, well, this is how I learned. I mean, there's been run? so many people along, along the way that have, that have been there to give me great advice. But what I'll tell you is, I was an English major in undergrad, okay? The greatest mentors of my life were in books. And so, and, and yes, I study I people that. for a living and anyone that knows me knows I'm a nerd. I literally study greatness for a living. I'll study Tom Brady, I'll study Serena Williams, I'll study Elon Musk, I'll study Abraham Lincoln to see, you know, is there something that I can learn to apply to my own life? But literally that is one of my hobbies is, is studying, um, is really, really studying greatness. And so anybody that's listening, oh, I don't know this person, I don't know that person, I don't have any connections. You can get on Amazon for one dollar and buy a used book of one of you know Benjamin Graham, of you know Warren Buffett or Elon Musk, and for three dollars you literally just got the mentor. And and so I, I would urge everybody 
to not just be focused on, oh, I need a physical mentor and it was this person, which is great, they might come, but you don't need it if you go read 50 books, read Benjamin Franklin's autobiography, you can buy it for two bucks used on Amazon and you just got Benjamin Franklin as your mentor. He is, it is not about your resources, which could be money, whatever, or the people you know. It's not about your resources, it is about you becoming more resourceful. Exactly, but you, you know, I, I think that there is so much content out there that we can just take to ourselves and use it into our whatever project we want to work on, whether it's self development, real estate. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to, to say that what you've been doing is so fantastic. And I just think that people, when they see you on social media, even if it's those short clips saying something, that can spark something inside of that individual to go for it, you know, whatever it is that they want to work on. So I wanted to congratulate you on that. But obviously, this is a question, I mean, random question, but I always ask this question to everybody that we have in our SLG meetup. The word luxury, it comes in so many different shapes and forms. And, and I just want to know, True what is it really luxury? luxury is being able to wake up in the morning and do what fills your soul. That that is luxury. Wow. Okay, bye. I'm leaving. <laughs> this is amazing. I love it. So profound and so deep. I really like that. So thank you. Thank you. No, that's really good. Now, just to, to kind of ask, because I know your time is valuable, and I want to make sure that people at least get a grasp of what you're doing. If people want to know more about you, they yeah, can go to your I mean, media. Look, What's the best it's way? Very, to very public. What I've done. I don't know, fortunately or unfortunately, but you can you can go to at Rastigar <laughs> on this. You can direct message me. My team is very, very active on that. We respond to it. You can go to our website, RastigarProperty.com. Fill out the contact form. You know, we have tons and tons of investors that are reaching out, and I kind of made a decision recently that I was going to allow some of the smaller investors to come in that I haven't had in years because the opportunity is so huge right now. And don't let anybody tell you the market that this, the reset, this is the buying opportunity. This is when rich people get rich and when poor people, unfortunately, because of a lot of things that aren't their fault, end up suffering. So if anybody here listening, anyone around needs help, you can reach out to our team and we'd be more than happy to educate you on what's going on and um you know and make sure that we provide provide an opportunity uh, for everybody to succeed because remember it wasn't long ago that i was delivering pizzas which wow i find that you know incredible and you know i i find that a really motivating story and empowering for those that are currently they can do it i'm telling you that I had a speech in the life where so they... bad i could not speak for seven years i had to learn how to talk so meaning if I can do it, I assure you, everybody listening on this is more likely smarter than me. So go out there, do it, have a fucking goal, write it down on a piece of paper, read it in the morning, read it at night until it happens, and don't ever stop. And wherever you are in your life, whatever job you have, whether you're working at Walmart, McDonald's, or Goldman Sachs, that is the place that you are and be the best at it. And I'll give you a thing, I tell people this to this day, I will still put money on anything that if you put me in a pizza restaurant, I will make the best pizza in America. And that attitude is what gets you to the next step. So wherever you are, fucking be there and own it and be the best in the world at that. And that is infectious, it's magnetic, and wow. that will take you to the next level. Because if you can't be great at small things, you will never be great at big things. Wow, brother, that's fire right there. I mean, I'm feeling that fire inside. Let's go, you know, like, come on. I'm sure everybody's popped up with this conversation. So thank you, brother. I God, really appreciate you. Congratulations, God, God bless you. Doing, by the way. Phenomenal. I want to learn more about your failures. So I want to get a copy of absolutely your book. Absolutely do. And, and the link is in sure. my bio. I'll and, send you one. Send me one. We'll be in touch. Yeah, I saw And uh, God bless all of you. Uh, I have to walk into a public pension fund meeting in a few minutes. But uh, love to all of you. And uh, hope we all get to connect.